G'day, I'm Peter Cosgrave, and it's my very great privilege to be the 26th Governor-General of the Commonwealth of Australia and to be talking to you today. My wife Lynn and I have undertaken our vice-regal responsibilities since the 28th of March 2014, when I was officially sworn in as Governor-General at a ceremony at Parliament House in Canberra. I was appointed Governor-General by Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II on the advice of the Prime Minister of Australia. There is no set limit to a Governor-General's term in office, however it's usually for about five years. With the Prime Minister as our Head of Government and Her Majesty the Queen as our Head of State, you might be wondering exactly what the role of the Governor-General entails. Under the Australian Constitution, Her Majesty the Queen is the Head of State of the Australian Government. However, as the Queen does not live in Australia, she appoints a representative to perform tasks on her behalf. That representative is the Governor-General. I have many constitutional duties as Governor-General. First, I must provide approval or agreement before a law can be created. This is known as Royal Assent and occurs because the Australian Parliament has three parts, the Senate, the House of Representatives and the Crown. The members of the Senate and the House of Representatives are elected by the people of Australia to make laws on their behalf. But before something can become law, the Queen or the Governor-General on her behalf must sign it to give it royal assent. I'm also President of the Federal Executive Council, a group of all Government Ministers and their Parliamentary Secretaries. I meet regularly with members of the Council to discuss recommendations they may make for my consideration. Though I'm expected to act on the advice of Ministers, I must also ensure that all actions are constitutionally correct and in line with parliamentary convention. When a federal election is called, it is my duty to dissolve the parliament by issuing a writ, a formal written order that a new parliament is to be elected. Then after the election, I invite the leader of the winning party to form a new government and executive council. I also have what is called reserve powers. These are powers a governor general may, in certain circumstances, exercise without or contrary to ministerial advice. For example, the power to dismiss a Prime Minister or Minister if they're acting unlawfully, or the power to refuse to dissolve the House of Representatives. These powers are meant to be used in the most unusual of circumstances and have rarely been used since Federation. Under the Constitution, I'm also the Commander-in-Chief of the Australian Defence Force. In this capacity, I appoint, on the recommendation of the Minister for Defence, the Chief of the Defence Force and the Chiefs of the Navy, Army and Air Force. I also commission officers in all three services and attend many parades and ceremonies to acknowledge and thank serving members for protecting our nation and our national interests. A Governor-General's role also involves ceremonial duties including opening Parliament, presiding over citizenship ceremonies, swearing in various officials such as federal government ministers. I now invite you to take and subscribe the oath of office as Parliamentary Secretary to the Attorney General and hosting visiting heads of state. I also received the credentials of other countries, ambassadors and High Commissioners to Australia. This is one of the few occasions on which the Rolls-Royce is used to take heads of mission back to their residence, embassy or High Commission following the ceremony. This Rolls-Royce is a 1970 Phantom 6 and was purchased by the Commonwealth Government in the early 1970s for official duties related to the role of the Governor-General. You're a worthy recipient of Australia's very high honour. As Governor-General, I also oversee the Australian Honours System and I'm the Chancellor of the Order of Australia. The Australian Honours System was established in 1975 and is how we as a nation acknowledge and thank those of our fellow citizens who've served their profession or community with distinction or who acted bravely in difficult circumstances. These wonderful people are an example for all Australians and this is why we recognise their achievements. There are four main honours lists announced each year. 
on Australia Day and on the Queen's birthday and two bravery honours lists. I also send congratulatory messages to Australians celebrating important milestones, such as their 100th birthday and subsequent birthdays, and their 50th and subsequent wedding anniversaries. Finally, and most enjoyably, I spend a lot of my time engaging with the community. I'm patron of more than 140 charitable, cultural, sporting and professional organisations. And I love being able to travel around Australia to meet people, everyday Australians who are doing wonderful things for the betterment of our nation. I get to thank them and bring attention to their good work so that more Australians may understand and benefit from what they're doing. This is a wonderful privilege for my wife Lynn and I and one we treasure. You might also be wondering where I live while serving as Governor-General. The Governor-General has two official residences, Government House in Canberra and Admiralty House in Sydney. Most of the duties I've described take place at Government House, although I also spend time working from Admiralty House. Both Admiralty House and Government House have long and interesting histories dating back to 1794 and 1828 respectively. You can read more about the two properties on our website, www.gg.gov.au. Both properties are also heritage listed, which means they really belong to all Australians. This is why each year, Lynn and I are pleased to welcome more than 20,000 visitors so we can share this important part of Australia's heritage. Well, thanks for watching and I hope this has given you a better understanding of the role of the Governor-General.